Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions and today I'm happy to be joined by uh, with Jasmine and Sam from Catalyst um, who are talking about well-being and and just before we started recording <laughs> Sam received a lightsaber and I can't tell you the amount of well-being that's in the room at the moment and so so stay tuned in fact watch the playlist and and we'll record the unboxing and a demonstration of lightsaber I'm so happy <laughs> we should have so done this on May the 4th that would have been awesome but anyway right anyway so well-being and it is about well you know in these difficult times just making the environments that we work in just that little bit easier, a little bit better, and have a bit of feel-good factor with our students and our staff. So to tell us more about their experiences, um, Jasmine, Sam, over to you. Hi, thank you, Kenji. Thanks for inviting us. I'm Jasmine Hodge. I'm an e-learning consultant at Catalyst. My previous life was spent at Fort Valley College as a learning technologies coordinator there, and I know some of you from there, Sam. Yep, and um, hello, my name's Sam Taylor. Um, I'm also an e-learning consultant at Catalyst. Um, before joining Catalyst, I was a learning technologist at Cranfield University in the Defence Security um, College. So, um, you know, at the UK um, Defence Academy, it was quite good fun using Moodle there. And before that, I was a learning technologist at um, Southampton Solent University. So my background is very much teaching and learning, learning design and using the VLE. And before that, I was a, a teacher teaching um, MVQs and college level study. So um, I've gone straight from teacher to technologist, but the teacher in me is still there. And this talk that Jazz and I are doing is one that I've done a few times before, but with a different spotlight on each. So the first talk that we did was focusing purely on feedback from um, lecturers, learning technologists, learning designers about how the um, rapid flip to 100% online delivery has gone for them and some sort of feedback as to how they made that work for them. Um, a few Months ago, um, I did um, a very similar talk to um, HECA, so that's over in Ireland um, with the colleges network over there. And this session, Jazz and I have had a look at what we've done in the past and we retweaked it with some even, you know, even more like live examples and stuff to show you. So everything that we're showing you today is, um, you know, some real practical tips of what you can do with your VLE. I mean. We, of course, we're just going to be showing what you can do in Moodle because that's all Jazz and I know and what we do at Catalyst. However, the principles can be applied to um, Canvas, Blackboard, Brightspace, whatever platform that you have. So it is platform agnostic as long as you have the functionality in there, um, just that our examples are in Moodle. So hopefully, <coughs> um, you know, you can see some stuff and think, oh, that looks really good. I'm going to steal that for mine. <laughs> and, and just as a sort of... Um, yeah, acknowledgement. This started off as a project with um, uh, Aurelie Soulier, who was um, my colleague at Catalyst, who is now at um, UCL and doing wonderful stuff there. So, mm -hmm. let's... yeah, no, thanks, Sam. So, yeah, will we start soon again? Yeah. So, yep. the session is um, mainly for your own CPD. Uh, so attending this is good. Um, but the approaches that we're going to demonstrate meet quite a lot of the professional standards for lecturers in Scotland. So Sam will bring them up, we'll take a quick look. So for example, professional values, you know, key one, students at the centre. The first one, understand student needs, the context which they're living, studying and the impact uh, this has on their learning. So what we are going to demonstrate and show today does meet quite a lot of these values within the standards. So moving on, I'll hand you over to Sam to look at how we define digital wellbeing and what we mean by it. Yep. And before we do that, I just want to have a quick sort of check in with you guys. So how how are you doing? You know, so currently um, with lockdown, with work, with your families. Um, so, so if you have um, a Mentimeter or the app or you've got access to it, um, this is the code. I'm just going to share this in the chat as well. So if you want to just click on the link, bear me one second while I get chat open. Okay. So if you can go there and I want you to give me three words to sort of sum up how you are currently feeling in general. So um, just so I can get a sort of sense of the room, how it's going and 
By the way, you may hear sounds of a lightsaber behind me because it's all into action and I'm trying not to get too excited. Um, but yeah, so if you can just give me a quick three words, how you're feeling. I'm just going to flip over just so we can see <laughs> how we're doing. Excited. Is that excited for my lightsaber? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes, it's definitely is Friday. <clears throat> and what's really, really nice to see actually is um, every time I've run this session, either with workshops that I've done um, through my role at Catalyst or um, you know, when I've done these webinars in the past, the change in the responses. So I guess we're all feeling the sunshine. We're all feeling that summer is around the corner. We're all feeling optimistic that lockdown is starting to become unlocked and we're starting to venture out into the world. Um, in previous sessions a lot of it was you know quite um sort of pessimistic so they're bored they're frustrated they're um overloaded they feel completely you know swamped you know they can't breathe because there's just so much going on so it's really really nice to see how it's changed but having these sorts of activities um as part of your sort of VLE sessions your um, like live webinar sessions with your students a, a quite a good opportunity to give your students a chance to reflect but also you as a teacher or a learning designer or a, you know a practitioner to sort of get a sense of you know how your students are doing so if you've got a really heavy session to come up you know with um, lots of you know, com complicated content and if everybody's already saying that they're knackered they're tired they're bored maybe you have to think you know how can I lighten um, you know the subject matter how can I you know do I need to give them more breaks do I need to include uh, other things into my session so that's you know, it's lovely to see that you're all feeling you know better or maybe it's just um you know a scottish thing maybe you're all you know more naturally more positive up there anyway <laughs> um anyway it's lovely to see that so i have chosen three definitions of digital well-being all three of these i think are brilliant they're, they're all different but i think they all apply so the three that i've chosen is jisks um, so uh, the impact of technologies and digital services on people's mental, men mental, mental, physical and emotional health. Now, I like this because you know, it's looking at the person as a whole. But if we look at UNESCO, it's about enhancing, improving, um, you know, the short term, long term, um, you know, well-being. So it's not just, um, you know, the emotional states, but it's also, you know, now, future, tomorrow. But then the third one is about how it's impacting other areas of your life. So the University of York, um, so it's about your relationships, your health and society. And, you know, I, like I say, I like all three. And if I had to pick one, I'd really, really struggle. But what I was really interested in is um, in your current um, place of work, so in your own institution, your own college or university, do you have a definition of digital well-being? Do you have any statements? Does, you know, do you have um, sort of well-being as digital well-being as part of your institution so hand over to jazz yeah if you just want to put it in the chat we can can delete the unesco one very positive we use the just definition at cdm and i yeah uh, to lizzie for the the zoo they don't have anything about digital well-being at all so mm. that's that's really interesting mm. as well. So hopefully you can take something from this session to go back. From Leslie, there's some initiatives. Athena Swan, mental health first aiders, but she can't say that there's a definition at Leslie's institution either. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, and it is interesting because you know the the reason why this sort of webinar, you know, the original um, reason for the webinar was uh, way back in October, I was talking to a university in Ireland and, you know, the, um, the learning design team were telling me some things that their academics were doing to try and get their students off their computer and out for walks and how they've redesigned content to be, um, you know, accessible away from their screens. And that's what sparked off the idea. So, you know, that was a combination with Maynooth University that sort of sparked all this off and they were looking at uh, mental health and digital well-being. OK, so moving on, um, you, I had um, as part of, I say, my research. So when when this idea in my head from Maynooth appeared, it was like, oh, I wonder what other people are doing. 
And so um, I contacted people that <clears throat> I knew in the Moodle community who were um, you know, teachers, learning designers, learning technologists, including uh, Gordon and uh, Jasmine, who you obviously know Jasmine now, but um, some of you may know Gordon as well, and just ask questions about, you know, what are you currently doing to you know, support staff and students with digital well-being, um, with, with, with regards to learning design as well. So how are you changing, um, you know, these courses that have been designed predominantly for face-to-face -face, um, delivery? How, how are you managing that online and um, what things have you learned? And so um, I'm just going to quickly hand over to Jazz about yeah. our conversation. Because we had that chat that day while I was learning technology coordinator at Force Valley College and I really enjoyed the chat because it made me sort of reflect and see how are we looking after our staff's digital well-being because that in turn encourages them to consider their students, you know, digital well-being. We had the, the digital community that was set up pre-lockdown that really took off and, you know, the physical campus closed and that became a hub. So we had a social and wellbeing channel in there that was, you know, dedicated to Zumba, virtual bingo, virtual quizzes. You know, people shared something that they'd found that, you know, would help with wellbeing. And we also had a dedicated Ask for Help channel that became, you know, an area where people could say, I need help with this and how are people finding this? And a lot of colleagues and everything shared in that. But with regards to, you know, learning materials and, you know, considering design, we try to encourage screen capturing a lot for lectures. And I have to say, the community, the digital community became a place where people that would never, never even have dreamed of doing that in the physical campus, they wouldn't have the, had the confidence, but the community was a safe place for them to learn to do screen caption, for example, to include in their, their learning materials. Um, you know, these materials don't need to be polished or overthought. You know, you don't have to be Steven Spielberg to create a screen capture and encouraging uh, lecturers to use that type of materials on the VLE that students could potentially take out and listen, you know, while they're studying or reviewing. So, so, yeah, I was quite proud of the staff's resilience at Fourth Valley College, you know, at the time. Yeah. So, um, so some of the feedback we got, and the first one that was quite important, was about our concerns of our teaching colleagues. So, um, yeah, so the learning technologists and learning designers, so the people that are there to support the academic staff, they were very worried about their colleague, colleagues. So this is back in November time. So about having to upskill really, really quickly, but there's no time in between to reflect, oh, what have I learned? What can I use next time? It's just basically pick up and go, pick up and go. There was no time in between. Um, feedback that um, the staff knew that they couldn't do everything, but they, you know, they have to do everything. So how can they do everything? You know, it's quite a, you know, a, a dire situation to be in. Um, the idea is that it doesn't matter how prepared you are, you're always hitting the ground running. Um, you know, the bond between teaching units has been stressed as well. And also students and staff at the first lockdown, say back in like April, so a year ago, they were a lot more forgiving of each other. Um, the students were more forgiving of the staff. But when it came to November time, when I talked to um, people, it, it was just expected to work that they would have figured it out by now. And this expectation, you know, meant that they were less forgiving. So there were a lot more complaints about stuff not happening as it should be. Um, so you know, these were general concerns for our teaching colleagues. And some of the common themes, um, so the irony of this Zoom fatigue, I mean, you know, we're all on a Zoom call right now, you know, but it's the, it's the only way of being able to connect um, with people for like synchronous um, delivery um, using screen and voice and breakout rooms and chats and stuff. So constant Zoom meetings and Zoom lessons. Um, academics have accidentally increased their workload. So they're having to do, they felt like they had to do more assessment um, to check in with their students it's like well do you do this amount of assessment you know in the classroom you know so why are you doing it online um, staff feelings of inadequacy that their content is not good enough and like what Jazz just said you know you do not need to be Steven Spielberg you know you just 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 do a quick screen capture and chuck it in there students will be you know, happy that you did this mentality about having to always be on and responsive as soon as a message or a query comes in or be seen you know, to be um, responsive and there online. And there's no time to actually 
come away from the computer and reflect and just think um, there's also things about feeling isolated and that they're not coping uh, concerns about being human in front of each other now you know a year later I've been the most human ever in front of you guys unboxing a lightsaber and talking about you know my excitement of you know having fun <laughs> with a lightsaber um, this time last year I would not be doing this with you guys I would have just been professional Sam so it's about not letting people see this human side but maybe you know it does help with well-being to show that you're human and then the irony of needing to use tech to promote digital well-being so having to use uh, websites um, live, live um, capture and stuff like that to, to try and encourage people not to be online all the time and to do other things it's quite a conflict and then there's some um, student feedback as well so this is anecdotal student feedback so how students have been coping so again you know, overload to so the digital fatigue and exhaustion um, too many discussion activities going at the same time across different modules it's really really difficult to context switch um, so they've been struggling with that so it's you know when it comes to designing activities check that they're not expected to do another day's worth of conversation with another team uh, space as well to learn so the privacy of being at home um, you know sometimes having to share study space with their parents and their siblings or if they're in a shared house you know how many people are on the internet at the same time having meetings or having classes and expected to talk and about this um, concept of the third space which uh, Fanahan at Maynooth introduced to me um, you know so before you used to have your home space and then you had your, your study or workspace well now your home is now your study and workspace. It's the third space, you can't escape it. You're here the whole time. I thought that was quite an interesting concept as well. And then there's the struggle of finding your clan, you know, find it hard to make friends. Um, you have this negative spiral of unfocused discussions, um, especially if lecturers were just saying, right, you know, have 10 minutes to discuss amongst yourselves, but not, not actually giving them a, a task to focus on during those discussions. So it's, it always feels like an icebreaker. Um, they, they struggled with that. And they felt like having to communicate with others felt like a chore because they weren't task orientated or they didn't actually know people enough to just start a discussion. You know, there was no familiarity there. So, you know, they were struggling as well. So we thought, well, well how can we help? What sort of things have we been doing? And a lot of this are ideas that have been suggested from, um, you know, the communities that I was talking to. And um, at a site level, things that you can do. Um, so. Um, for example, bearing in mind that your VLE is now your online campus, you know, especially if you're um, in complete lockdown in your country and um, students are not allowed on campus, staff are not allowed on campus. Your VLE is now part of that virtual campus estate. So, you know, use it, use it and, and try and make it as lively as your um, on-site campus. So incorporate elements of your student union and staff association into your, your VLE if you can. Um, add events to your VLE's calendar, your site-wide uh, up-and-coming events list, you know, things like that, just to draw attention to things that um, staff and students can do. Um, link to staff association student union sites if you can, you know, give them a lot more exposure because these opportunities to sort of network and meet new people and, you know, are really, really important, especially for like college and university life. Um, do, you, do you have the privilege of having a campus radio, you know, do you have, um, you know, I know when I was at Solent we had radio sonar, you know, could you incorporate that into your site somehow, could you get a handy dev to create a play button or a live streaming button, you know, things like this to bring your VLE or your, you know, your virtual estate alive. Uh, again, um, so uh, a lot of um, people I spoke to have used their VLE to create a course specifically for digital well-being with hints and tips. Um, so this is outside of the uh, academic courses. So um, give them a place where they can go, which is easily visible as well. When they log in, they can see it. And then again, with uh, accessibility tools. So um, Jazz is going to talk about that a bit more in a minute. But, you know, using um, accessibility tools is not just for those that have accessibility issues. Being tired after looking at a screen all day is also an accessibility issue. If you, if you can't read the content because you're just so tired, being able to use tools to be able to you know, re, um, re-display the content in a way that suits your preference is quite important. So just to sort of give you an idea, you know, I, um, I, created, I created a course in Moodle just to give you sort of an idea. Um, you know, we have links to you know, come and talk to us if we've got um, issues. Uh, 
highlighting things like campus radio, like a buddy system, if you have um, that system. Um, if you don't, maybe it's worth thinking of a buddy system. So those that have come forward and say, I'm really, really struggling, match them up with a highly motivated individual that will help, you know, keep them on the positive side. Uh, and also stuff like mindfulness workshops, do you, you know, do you as an institution run them? Do you do online yoga, stuff like that? So things just to get people um, together. Um, there are, this is Moodle and it, you, you know, that I'm using uh, elements called bootstrap elements at the moment, uh, which is just code that you can just paste in and reconfigure. So even if you're not a teach uh, a techno, techno person, you can just copy and paste the code and just flip it into something nice like these. Now, if I was to write these things from scratch, I couldn't do it. I just copied and pasted the code in, just changed the images, but just things about bringing your page alive. So it's not just a, a page full of links. So Jazz, do you want to talk a bit about UserWay? Yeah, if um, you want to bring it up, Sam. So UserWay is a, it's a free widget and it's just code that can be added by your site admin to your VLA. <clears throat> so I need to credit Emma for this in Edinburgh College for bringing it to our attention because it's a fantastic wee tool. So it's really powerful and it just sits sort of the right hand side um, of your screen. So this is across any device. It's completely responsive. It's got different features like Sam's demonstrating, you know, you can change colors, you can highlight links, you can make the text bigger. It's got all the usual accessibility tools that you, you sort of want when you're working online, but it also, you know, it includes tools for people's preferences. So if you're learning online and you prefer to use that screen reader, that line, you can turn that on and just use that. So it really, you know, um, inclusive to all learning preference. So we would really recommend that we too. Thanks, Sam. Sorry, I was just getting excited like I normally yeah. do when it comes to these kind of tools. But yeah, so as Jazz said, it is a completely free tool. Um, it's just you, you can have a um, you, you can have a paid for version which has your own branding and stuff on it. But um, the free one is perfect. Um, I, I, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> right, so a very quick pause right now because we've been sat down for a bit. If you can just stand up if you can and have a little wiggle. Well, I can see you all now, so let's have a little wiggle. Ooh. Air guitar. Air guitar. Let's do a Donald. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, think about when you are doing live sessions, is there anything you can do to get your colleagues, your friends, your peers to stand up and, you know, just get the blood running around your legs and stuff. But anyway. Right, you can sit back down now. But that's just to give you sort of an example of sort of stuff you can do. You can do head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I, I should have done that. Anyway. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Okay, so now we're looking more at like course level um, ideas. And this is where we sort of start to unpick things about learning design. And um, there was lots of conversation about um, uh, looking at um, learning design frameworks and, and things like that. And I haven't got that far about mapping some of these ideas onto frameworks. But, um, you know, especially things like the universal design for learning, that's a really good framework to look at. And that could tick a lot of your uh, well-being boxes as well. Um, you know, they're not just for um, like on online course design. You know, there's, there's other things you can um, use that for. But um, some things that you can do in your course. So if you have control of a course um, as, a, as a teacher with editing rights on your course, there's things that you can do. So looking at your, um, your layout and structure, the way you've designed your content, um, you know, giving uh, power to like student reps to have their own areas and maybe have more virtual drop-ins for people just to get together and say, hey, um, because at the end of the day, your virtual classroom, you know, so it's not just a name now, you know, you all call it, oh yeah, your virtual classroom, you know, your, your course is your virtual, it is now your virtual classroom. There is no physical classroom that your students can go to if you're in lockdown and they can't come on campus, it is the classroom. So just how, you know, you would, uh, I guess it's more for school age um, teachers, but you, you can decorate your walls, you can put the recent learning up, all this sort of stuff, you know, do the same with your own course. It's your place to sort of express yourself, express your students' interests, but also to, you know, make it a nice space for them to learn. So some um, ideas that you can look at is um, like the active engaged learning. So these are some of the um, tips and tricks that um, the teachers shared with me and the learning design shared with me. So about being able to produce podcasts. So a weekly podcast that cover the key points that's going to happen that week that they can listen to whilst on the walk. 
uh, act, uh, designing activities that could involve some offline reflection. Um, so um, you get them to actually come off and physically draw something, maybe take a photo of it and upload it rather than having to do it all on the screen. Looking at group work, making it more task orientated um, and this, the notion of keeping groups together for longer as well. So don't keep changing the groups, keep, you know, keep a study group together. That's their group for maybe the next month before they switch to a new one. Live sessions as well. So for example, like with Zoom, a big blue button sessions, you know, maybe open the room early. Uh, so people can come in and talk and say hi like what we did before we joined this one and in the end as well once you close the session you know could you stay on another 15 minutes to field any calls um or you know any other further questions from the session and also uh, you know our students to, to suggest songs that we played during webinars as well so like the first 10 minutes of a session while we're waiting for people to come in you can just play some music um, i know when we first did this webinar orly and i we played some background forest music just to calm people as they were coming in. And uh, we actually found it quite annoying, but <laughs> some people enjoyed it. So, you know, to each their own. Uh, other things as well. So sketching your thoughts. So it, it's, it's been shown that, um, you know, drawing, sketching, mind mapping um, could be really, really good for, um, you know, brain function. Um, putting ideas to paper is a powerful way to extend one's memory I know that if I write stuff down or sketch it I tend to retain the information better than I do just reading it um, I know a lot of people do that as well so it's some really cool information here and I will share my slides but you know mind mapping is such a powerful tool if you um, you know maybe incorporate elements of that in your um, learning design Assessments and assessment design so allow flexibility in assessment submission so um, it's giving students a choice but not too much choice because they don't like too much choice because that's just as overwhelming um so give them the option of maybe a thousand word response or a three minute video response give them the option how they want to do it but make them you know comparable to say okay video is worth a thousand words give students choices as well and options um of what they want to go deeper into so for example you give them the requirements you know go and look at this do this do that if you have time or you're interested here some more links to further information but they're not you know you don't have to do them but you know feed their interests making assessments authentic and meaningful for them so um, in vocational study it's it happens a lot anyway where they have to show how they've applied you know um, principles to a real life situation you know maybe look at your assessments and reframe the questions so they can think about how what they're learning applies to them in their world or their future career prospects or stuff that maybe they've done in the past incorporate peer and self-assessment opportunities as well so um it does everything have to be summatively assessed as well lots of opportunities now for self-assessment that doesn't actually count towards a final grade and do they even need a grade a grade so uh, those of you that have met jesse stommel or seen any of his keynote talks or follow him on twitter you know he doesn't um you know he he has these ideas about grades being detrimental in some cases maybe feedback is just enough maybe they don't need a grade all the time even for like summative uh, sorry, formative self-assessment activities, just give them feedback rather than a final grade. Uh, and then uh, instructional design ideas. So I know I'm about to run out of time, but, um, you know, structure your module page. So stuff is easy to locate. So these are simple principles that um, I think some people forget when it's like rapid, get everything online quick, quick, quick. You know, stick to the core principles. So structuring your content. Provide context as well. So before we used to do, say, do this so that, you know so you can understand this but then you can add other things like in order to improve the sense of communicate uh, community those sorts of things so link back to your oh last minute okay and then chunking up content and using your colleagues to experiment with um so i've got an example of a course that i want to share very very quickly uh, it shows about incorporating other things like involving nature in your course opportunities to share advice and ideas signpost support and weaving well-being into the course so if i just show you now so here is my course here um i have a social space um with my nice gratitude wall that um students can uh, submit to make it feel um you know, happy and friendly you know what you're thankful for I have a glossary with um, random tips of how to um, you know, look after yourself. So every time I go in, there's a new um, tip for them to um, maybe help them. 
incorporating elements of nature. So you see, I've got my nice um, picture in the background. If I go to uh, my topics, I've got my mindfulness quotes across the top. So little things I can do in there, but also if I just quickly show you, um, if I flip to a student role, I have little reminders during uh, my sessions to look after myself. For example, I've attended a webinar. You know, so I've gone to my webinar and if I now go back, I see a, I have a little reminder to go and have a glass of water you know, things like this, things that you can just, you know, weave into your course that, you know, you may not even think about. So I can share that course as well, um, you know, after the session, so you can go and have a look at it for yourself. But other things in your VLE, so your, um, you know, monitor engagement, so see if your students are logging in, engaging, doing the activities. If they're not, is there a problem? Are they unwell? Do they need some help? Do you need to go and give them a, a virtual cuddle? Do you need to refer them on to somebody else? You know, to use your monitoring, monitoring analytics and engagement to not spy on your students, but just to see how they're doing. And then finally, um, you know, it's gamification time. Yeah, the things that you can do in there to make it fun. Um, you know, so levels, code breaking activities, badges, treasure hunts, and a really, really good talk that I really recommend you go and have a look at if you haven't already is uh, Mark Glynn's at DCU. Um, I've got a link down there. Um, he talked about student engagement and gamification. Um, so it's a really, really good one that I recommend you go and watch. Um, it is Moodle specific, but again, with everything, it, these elements and principles are universal. So I am going to stop there and I'm going to say thank you for listening. Um, obviously, there's a lot of stuff there to unpack and um, we will make the content available to you. But thank you for listening. That's thank you. Brilliant, Sam. <laughs> Thanks, Jazz. Um, th there's so much in there. Um, and I especially love messages like bringing your student association and union to the forefront and putting it in the flay in, in place so that all all people can see it because it's that that sense of community and the fact that we're all in it together is so important okay so uh, unfortunately that's the the end of our virtual bridge session for those of you watching on youtube but um, we'll continue the discussion here and later we're going to have once the lightsaber is powered up we'll we'll, we'll, we'll show you that unboxing and demonstration of the lightsaber <laughs> See what you miss when you don't come to these things. Um, okay, so until the next session, um, please, as always, stay safe.